Welcome back. Let's talk a bit about what you should do once you have imported data. And if you are on a Windows machine, once you have imported your data through the import tool um, to get it from a text file, you would already have um, a table. So let's first do that on this Mac machine, just that we are on the same page. Now with this data set, our table has no headers. So the export from NCONC in this example comes without a header. So we have to unselect that. Otherwise, Excel will interpret the first line as a header, but we want to specify that directly. So when we insert table uh, here, then um, the table columns will be numbered um, by default and we want to give them descriptive names. So the first one is our hit, so we can say number of hit or um, whatever you want. Number two is the left uh, context. Um, column three is our match plus the right context. So NCONC in the current version does not separate the right context from your match area. So let's call that perhaps match plus left context. And you can see that I tend to use uh, capitals and capital letters for uh, column names. Um, that is my personal preference. There's no deeper meaning to it. Um, maybe there is, but we'll come to that in uh, due course. And the D column is um, the file ID. So if you loaded several files into AntConc, it will give you the file name there as well. So that's one of the first things that you should do, obviously also to save that document. So if we save it to a particular location, so let's save it to our files folder, then we could say this is from the Brown Corpus, um, give it a descriptive name and I always include the corpus um, name uh, in, in most cases and uh, what kind of data it contains and it's um, the lemma cause. So save that, so that's all good. And now what you wanna do sometimes is include um, or insert more columns to add information. And um, I like this output in AntConc because it illustrates how you can perhaps move columns around, right? So the D column is the file ID. And I tend to keep information that pertains to the file or um, some meta information. I tend to have that on the left of my linguistic data and then all linguistic annotation that I add in analysis, I put that to the right. So the D column here with the file ID, that's meta information uh, that comes from the corpus. So I tend to move that around to the other side. So to insert columns, you can do that um, always to insert to the left of um, a particular column. So if we go back to the home tab and we have the column B selected, then I can insert a column to the left of that. So that just basically says insert cells. And because I've selected the entire column that will insert a, a selection of, of a full range of cells, i.e. a column. So if I hit that, then there will be a new column. Um, I could have also selected the arrow key and then insert a sheet column. So play around with that if you want to. Now there are multiple ways of moving column E or what is now column E to column B. Uh, one that we have already um, talked about, one strategy would be uh, to uh, say, okay, I wanna copy the contents of uh, cell E two into column B two, right? So that would just copy uh, that information over here. But there is um, um, a drawback to that perhaps if you now m removed the E column, so select the E column and hit delete, that will give you an error. Why? Because it the reference is missing, right? So we entered a formula, not the actual value. So if we undo that, um, that would revert that. But um, recall that if you go into the cell, if you've entered a formula, it will have the formula in that cell, not the actual value. So now we would have to copy and then paste the value of what is in the cell. And one way that we could do that, but that comes with an error message is if we select the B column and then hit command C or control C, that would copy or select and copy the B column. And if we then clicked um, a right click perhaps, and then say paste special, and then 
selected the values because we don't want to paste the formulas, but we want to paste the values that is in the cell, that would give us an error message. Why is that? Well, click that away. If we go down to the very end of our data set, what happened was is that what we selected wasn't the content of the column, but in, in our data set, but the content of the entire column. So we're trying to put some data into our uh, back into the column that extends our data set. So that's why um, you get this error message. So if you wanted to do that, and I'm using the shortcut to go back up, uh, command or control and the up arrow. If I'm in, um, okay, well, hit escape, I'll get rid of the uh, greeny things. Um, if remember from the shortcut tutorial, if you hold command shift and the downward arrow, that would only select the contents of that column. So if I now hit control C for copy and right click on it, to paste special and then the values, that would do that just for the data set that is in the table. All right, so now you have the uh, names of the files in there and you could uh, delete the E column and it would still be there because now the reference um, is no longer uh, relevant. Let's undo that for the time being to illustrate one more thing. If you were to um, enter file ID, then because that is not a unique, unique column name, because you already have it in, in the E column, um, Excel automatically numbers, uh, that double, uh, column name. So if you have inserted a table that, uh, means that all the column names have to be unique. And if they're not, then Excel will number them accordingly. The second option to move columns around is uh, to uh, quite similar, just without the um, copying um, by formula. You are in the C column and then insert a column next to that and just say file ID, perhaps new, right again, just uh, for the sake of the argument, and then copy the content of that into that column. However, again, if you just select the entire column and do control C and then move to the C column and press perhaps command V to paste, you get the same error that you got previously. Again, for the same reason, because you selected the entire document column rather than the column for uh, the table or the data set. So to do that, you could um, hit uh, or go to F1 Again, press and escape, get rid of the um, green frame. Then command, shift and hold, down out, uh, arrow key, and then hit command C for copy. And then go back to the C column and just press command V for paste. And that would automatically enter it uh, because you've only selected the data um, for, for that table for that limited uh, data set. Because you copy directly, there is no um, formula, so you don't have to uh, copy the values or paste the values into, into there. So you would have um, all that data in there already. Okay, so um, that way you can get rid of quite a number of columns. So to get rid, um, again, select the column, hit delete, and you want this deleted as well. All right, so now we have moved one column to the beginning, to the left, where I usually keep the corpus documentation or the corpus information. Um, these could be things like uh, file ID, um, genre. Um, if I have social linguistic information, I can keep uh, gender, age, and this kind of information to the left. And then to the right, I would have my linguistic annotation. And over the next few files, we will look into things like coding for word class, perhaps. Okay, bye.